It's quickly becoming the stuff of legends. Urban Meyer noticed Sam Hubbard playing dodgeball in a high school gym class. At the time, Hubbard was an All-American lacrosse player at Cincinnati Moeller and planning on going to Notre Dame to play that sport. Meyer changed his mind, and as Mark reports in tonight's Buckeye Beat, Ohio State is reaping the benefits of Hubbard's dodgeball skills. We're not dominating the lacrosse fields. Sam Hubbard was a safety in high school. The Buckeyes moved him first to tight end, then linebacker, and finally to defensive end. He's bulked up to 260 pounds, a testament to his hard work and Coach Mick Marotti's strength program. Well, it's hard to explain his development because it's been off the charts, to be honest with you. Uh, it's kind of unprecedented to see a guy uh, go from where he was to where he's at in such a short amount of time. But uh, those are the things Coach Mick does. And it's, uh, again, he puts together a great plan, but Sam's followed that plan and uh, it's worked out well. Hubbard admits it took a while to get used to his new position. But they told me on uh, Tuesday I came in, there's like, you're going to Coach Johnson's room from now on. So I just sat down, <laughs> sat in the back of the room, and just had no idea what he was talking about for the first four <laughs> or five weeks. And uh, just kind of observed and picked up the lingo and how the things work in that room. I honestly think it, uh, I didn't feel like I was actually a defensive end until I got in the game and actually played in, uh, against Virginia Tech because, uh, you know, I never, I was just always wondering what his actual game would be like as a defensive end. I've only seen practice reps, and after I saw those game reps, I realized that, uh, you know, I did belong where I was. Number six has two more sacks this season than his mentor, Joey Bosa. The redshirt freshman knows he can't hold that over the junior All-American. I think he's got a little better career stats than me, so I can't say anything <laughs> yet. Certainly it will be interesting to see how Sam Hubbard performs against Western Michigan, a veteran offensive line for the Broncos, as our veteran Buckeye insider Mike Miller joins us now to talk more about this Ohio State-Western Michigan matchup, first ever meeting between the Broncos and the Buckeyes. And this is a Western Michigan team that came into this season with high hopes. And you look through what they've done through the first three games, I don't think there's much... Uh, Losing to Michigan State, certainly no yeah. shame there. They gave yeah. the, the Spartans a little bit of a scare, hung yep. with them for the first half. But I, I think losing on the road to Georgia Southern probably raised some eyebrows that Georgia Southern, Western Michigan, about equal in conferences, but you would think maybe the MAC would have a little bit of an edge there, yet Georgia Southern picked up the win at home. Yeah, that was a little bit of a setback, I think, for Western Michigan. Although Georgia Southern, as we all know, has a tremendous history of who they are and in the context of their level of football, uh, but as, as the uh, chalk is written, a setback for the Western Michigan Broncos there. But I think about the matchup with Ohio State, though, Mark. Their coach, P.J. Fleck, with his Ohio State background, uh, I think he's going to have them absolutely prepared and present this as more of an opportunity for Mi Western Michigan rather than an obligation. Broncos led by running back Jarvian Franklin. Last year was the MAC Offensive Player and Freshman of the Year. First time anybody has shared those two honors in the Mid-American Conference. He finally got a little bit healthy against Murray State, sure. a big game against Murray State after being held in check the first yep. couple of weeks. And with, with Franklin not quite performing as you thought, that really has put the spotlight on some of the receivers for Western Michigan. Yeah, and good receivers they are. Uh, Braverman's well documented as an outstanding talent with a lot of catches, a lot of yardage, and there's about three or four more other guys in the mix for Western Michigan. But I would say don't sleep on uh, Jarvie and Franklin. He was a genuine 1,500-yard guy last year. He's only a sophomore. He was a true freshman last year. So he's a young guy ready to use the Ohio Stadium stage as an opportunity to do well. And the Broncos quarterback is a smart veteran guy that can throw it, and he can throw it with authority, and he, and he doesn't throw a lot of picks. Corey Davis, the other receiver, yep. four times. Davis and Braverman have both had over 100 yards receiving in one yep. game. Zach Terrell, the quarterback for Western Michigan, eight touchdowns so far this year, but he's also been picked off five times. And he's going up against a silver bullet defense with a lot of momentum and a silver bullet secondary that has done a very good job of intercepting opposing quarterbacks. I think the biggest thing for the Buckeye defense with a guy like Terrell is try to not allow him to go deep. Uh, you mentioned the five picks. I don't think that's horrible in three games. I think most of those came against uh, Michigan State. But nevertheless, if he can't go deep, then underneath stuff probably won't hurt Ohio State. 
uh, because of the Buckeye linebackers and how good they are in space. So eliminating Western Michigan or at least containing their passing attack to me is the first key for OSU to shut them down. Back-to-back -back games, Ohio State has allowed less than 100 yards receiving. Yeah. I think that's going to be tested this week only because of the yep. system that yep. the Broncos play defensively. Plenty of starters returning this Western Michigan defense, and it's let's face it, it's an Ohio State offense that's really looking to get healthy whether Western Michigan is going to be a sacrificial whipping boy or whether or not this offense struggles, that I think is probably going to be in the story of this game. It is going to be the story of this game. And for the Buckeyes, you're going to see potentially anything on offense. Yes, they'll try to establish the up tempo, and they're going to certainly make an attempt to be physical up front. But also there's a concerted effort to make big plays, which makes me think the Buckeyes will take some chances offensively to try to initiate some big plays and gain some momentum. And uh, I have to believe that the offense is going to get some momentum and, and some, of their, some of their moxie back this week. If they don't, uh, then it's uh, uh, more concern. Reading between the lines of what was said earlier this week by Ohio State, the offensive players aren't to blame, the execution is to blame, the coaching staff is yep. to blame. We know Urban Meyer likes to grind on his players. He's grinding on his coaches this year. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what type of game plan they come up with and whether or not we see more of an input from Tim Beck more of an up-tempo mm -hmm. approach going up against the Broncos. Uh, that's excellent because that really puts the onus on everybody across the board, and it's and it should be that way at this point for Ohio State because they really have been injury-free uh, through the early season. The only significant injuries were before the year even started. So if you've got a healthy cast of guys, and we know there's plenty of talent with this Ohio State offensive roster, there simply is no reason why they don't start to score some points. All right, thank you very much, Mike. You know, a handful of Ohio natives on the Western Michigan roster, but their backup quarterback is from New Jersey. It is Tom Flacco, yes. Joe Flacco's <laughs> younger brother, the Baltimore Raven quarterback. But the interesting wow. thing about Tom Flacco, he is from Voorhees, New Jersey, Eastern High School, same high school as Eli Apple. Apple. Eli Apple in high school was a receiver and the backup to Flacco. <laughs> so if Eli Apple wow. should pick off Joe Flacco or uh, Tom Flacco, who, who did see some playing time against Murray State, that, that could be an interesting little <laughs> sidelight to uh, the game this Saturday. Saturday afternoon, 3.30 kickoff. Of course, we'll have plenty of highlights for you Sunday morning on WOSN. Andy?